a system adapted from the G36 that it got from the AR-18. Push out your takedown pin, your firing pin comes out, no firing pin spring in the military model, cam pin comes out, and your multi-lug rotating bolt. That's the essence of field stripping the gun. Take the gas system down farther than that, you really don't have to for normal maintenance. A few key things about the SCAR Heavy, one-piece extruded aluminum upper receiver, magazine adapted for the FNFAL magazine, charging handle taken from the FNC, similar in design, bolt is taken largely from the HKG36. Trigger mechanism is adapted from the FNC, which itself was adapted from the M1 Garand. Although it's a little bit different than the M4 carbine in terms of detailed disassembly, really it's overall very simple, very straightforward design. Monty, when I see a weapon like this with a short barrel, I see a weapon useful for CQB, helos, vehicles, other areas where space is at a premium and you're willing to give up a little bit of performance. And conversely, when I see a weapon like the Mark 17, Larry, I see more of an open terrain weapon for longer ranges, longer distances. And finally, we have a lightweight 7.62 in the system that's compatible with all the optics, flashlights, and foregrips that have become modular with all of our other weapon systems. You know, and interestingly enough, for the first time ever, you can turn that weapon into more of a confined space weapon. Less than two minutes, swap the barrel out, put in a 13 inch barrel, and you have a weapon you can do CQB with if necessary, but at the cost of some of the downrange terminal performance of 7.62. Good point, Larry. I've been fortunate enough to be able to get a lot of rounds downrange with this weapon system. I like it. The more I shoot it, the more I like it. I've been able to get a lot of confidence built up in this weapon system. The only one thing I'm not 100% sure on is the utility of the side folding stock for myself. Like any weapon, there's always going to be one or two things you really don't dig on. For me, it's the iron sights, in particularly the fully hooded front sight. When it's up, it interferes with a red dot like on this Aimpoint Micro, which is going to cause soldiers to have it folded down. And when they come up and their red dot isn't on, now they're going to be fumbling to try to fold the sights up. To me, that's a no-go. I would have done it different if I'd have been in charge. For the first time, Larry, we have a family of weapon systems that allows the operator to engage targets from arm's length to 800 meters, spanning across the SCAR light, SCAR heavy, and the SSR weapon system. Hey, absolutely right, Monty. Good point. And when you throw in the parts commonality, which is unique to this weapon system, no matter what the future holds for the SCAR family, no doubt about it, it'll have a unique place in the history of small arms. At just under eight pounds, the SCAR Heavy is at least a pound lighter than the M14, FNFAL, or G3, regardless of configuration. We're here at range T13 at U.S. Training Center in Moyoc, North Carolina, one of the finest ranges I've ever seen. And we're gonna talk about offhand shooting. The gun I'm using is my own personal Daniel Defense M4 carbine. Now, when you're gonna shoot offhand, and I'm gonna take shots at about 50 yards or so down range on some steel. I like to take my butt stock, collapse it all the way, all the way out, and depending on your butt pad, I like to go in one notch if I have a rubber butt pad. If it's smooth, I keep it all the way out. That's if I have no body armor on or no equipment. When I get in position, slightly farther than shoulder width apart and I'm bladed towards the target, meaning I'm not square and I'm not all the way perpendicular, I'm slightly bladed. I want a slight forward lean on the balls of my foot. I want to be leaning into the target somewhat in order to control recoil, almost as if I'm leaning into a strong wind. I bring the gun up and I want to have positive pressure straight to the rear. I reach as far out on the forearm as possible. Remember, think of the barrel as a garden hose. The closer you get to the muzzle, relative speaking, the better control you have on it. So when I have a long rail like this one, I get all the way out here and I bring the gun straight back into my shoulder with positive pressure. This helps control recoil and get the gun back on target quicker. There's some people that like to bring the gun up and rest it on their hand and allow the gun to kind of float in front of them. I really don't buy into that. My thought is you need to be tight, you need to be aggressive. Not overly tense, but if you're aggressive, it allows you to control recoil and get faster follow-up shots. 
So I pull the gun straight back in the shoulder. I get high up on the pistol grip. I want to try to engage the trigger, if at all possible, straight to the rear. I get behind the gun, and this is my basic standing firing position with the carbine. Okay, here we have a little unscientific field test with 5.56 versus 7.62. We're at 50 yards. Downrange are two of the MGM steel triple dropper targets. In theory, it'll take three hits for me to knock my steel from the top position all the way to the bottom with this rifle. We'll see how it shakes, and then we'll try it with the SCAR Heavy. Here we go. Okay, it took me a total of nine shots in 5.56 to get that dropper steel from the top all the way to the bottom. I'm confident the 10 inch barrel in my SCAR light is a factor in that, which is non-standard by the way. Now Monty has the 16 inch barrel in his SCAR heavy. He's gonna give it a shot and see how it goes. Okay, Monty, it only took you two shots to get it from top all the way down to the bottom. And you fired three, but it was all the way to the bottom on your second shot. You had higher shot placement on the steel, which definitely helped. But regardless, that shows the difference between 7.62 and 5.56. No arguing about the horsepower that gun brings to the battlefield. No doubt in the United States, one of the premier examples of the new breed of battle rifles is the SCAR Heavy. Because of its affiliation with SOCOM and with Crane, it's definitely going to be the standard which everybody else is going to compare to. Hit. That's all I got. We'll see you next time back on Tactical Arms. Thank you.